Now we'll take a look at this end of chapter question. One way to approach this problem is to outline what we know from previous knowledge, say basic geometry, and what we're given in the problem. Well, we know that area equals length times width, and volume is length times width times height. And height can be solved for um, in the volume equation by uh, dividing the volume by the length times the width. And therefore, the height in general terms is volume divided by the area. And this is important to realize because we're asked to find the height of the oil layer. An oil layer essentially is a, is a volume, and so we have to find, uh, determine one parameter of the volume, and that is the height. Now you might say, well, how did you know to do that? Well, that's the problem-solving skill and, and analytical thinking process. So then we look at what we're given in the problem. And we could look at the given information as two conversion factors, 2.47 acres per uh, 10,000 meters squared and uh, 5 cubic centimeters per drop of oil. Once we have this information, we could begin to piece together um, a mathematical setup to come to a solution. The first thing I did was to find the area of this half an acre. Well, the reason is we have to get our answer in picometers. So we have to get to a metric unit. An acre is an English unit. And we have to do some conversions to get out of the English unit. So in that half an acre, based on the information we're given in the problem, is 2,024 meters squared. The next step is to utilize this equation we set up here earlier, height is volume over area, and if I substitute the numbers that I have currently, you see we have 5 centimeters cubed, which is what is given in the problem, divided by 2,024 meters squared. Well, I intentionally highlighted centimeters cubed and meters squared because there's a unit incompatibility problem. If we want to carry out this math, we have to have the volume in the same linear unit as the area. And I say linear, linear unit, meaning it's, it's got to be meters or centimeters or picometers. Uh, and of course that particular meter has to be cubed and squared. So what I chose to do was convert the centimeters cubed to meters cubed. And off to the right here I have a conversion uh, for meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And the way I like to think about um, setting up conversion factors for squared and cubic units is that I first look at the linear unit, meter related to centimeter. And there's one meter and 100 centimeters. But we have to cube the entire conversion factor, the linear conversion factor, to get to cubic meters and cubic centimeters. If that's the case, then uh, this hundred centimeters becomes a million cubic centimeters. We could see five cubic centimeters is divided by ten to the six cubic centimeters and the units cancel out and we're left with meters cubed in the numerator which gives us an, a volume of five times ten to the minus sixth cubic meters. Remember this number here is the numerator of this fraction. So we need to do one more step. And that is to divide 5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed by 2024 meters squared. Dividing the numbers we get 2.47 times 10 to the minus 9th. And the unit of meters comes from the meters squared canceling out entirely and the cubic unit 
gets canceled out and what we're left with in the numerator is just meter. Although we have an answer for the height, the unit of meter needs to be converted to picometers because that's what the problem asked us to determine was the height in picometers. So one final conversion and that is there's 10 to the 12 picometers in one meter and our final answer is 2.47 times 10 to the third picometers or 2470 picometers.